Good evening. I'm Spot On Weather meteorologist Matthew Euler, and welcome to the official Spot On Weather 2022-23 winter forecast. This year, I'm going to divide up the winter forecast into five parts, and I'll go over the agenda here in a moment. Um, first, on um, part one this evening, I'm going to cover the review of last winter, uh, so we can kind of see uh, overall what occurred. And by the way, look at this funny picture to start things off in tonight's video. Um, if you're a dog lover like myself, I tell you what, will your dogs be having to be bundled up like this and dress warmly this winter? Or will your dogs not have scarves around their necks like this? Uh, with no heavy coats, will be a mild winter. That's really what I'm going to de really dive into deeply here. So let's get right to the part one of the 2022-23 winter forecast. All right, so here is how I plan to divide up the winter forecast this year. Uh, the first part this evening, I'm going to cover the 2021-22 winter season review. Uh, for part two, I will then move on to a discussion of La Nina. Part three, we'll dive deeper into the teleconnections, the many, many teleconnections uh, that are listed in parentheses, and I will definitely dive deeply into that and what each of those means. Uh, part four will cover sudden stratospheric warming events as well as polar vortex discussions. In part four also, I will dive into sea surface temperature anomaly discussion. We'll be doing some comparisons of the sea surface temperature anomalies of the past couple winters, see if we can correlate um, any particular pattern to what type of winter we could expect. And then we'll be looking at part five to wrap it up. The weighted forecast factors, I'm going to go over everything, kind of tie everything up at the end in part five and talk about where I'm weighting, the, which forecast factors I'm weighting the most basically. And then also, I will be sharing with you my United States winter weather forecast weather maps for um, temperature and precipitation expectations in part five. Now, by the way, I wanted to mention that the winter forecast, when I cover the time period I'm covering for this winter forecast, is from 1 December to 28 February. So I'm using the meteorological winter criteria. All right, so let's first start off and take a look globally of how last winter, the winter of 21-22, actually went. Specifically, when we talk about temperatures, uh, this is a, a really good analysis from NOAA here, this image on the left, the globe, uh, generally showing you uh, what's going on at the overall pattern. And you'll notice that, you know, it was pretty warm across the Northern Hemisphere as a whole. In fact, it was the fifth warmest on record in 143 years of record keeping on the global scale as far as temperatures go. The global surface temperature was 1.51 degrees Fahrenheit above the climatological norm. And, you know, despite the globe being above normal, it's fifth warmest on record uh, since record keeping began, North America actually had its coldest December to February period since 2004 and 2015, respectively. So it was quite mild across Europe. And then, you know, look at these peach or pinkish areas. You can see across the Northern Hemisphere how mild things were, you know, not only over the land areas, such as Europe there, but also over the oceans. The Atlantic Ocean featured above normal air temperatures as well as a good chunk of the Pacific Ocean. And of course, with everything moving from west to east in the mid-latitudes, um, that's going to have a huge bearing on the temperatures downwind of those upper level prevailing upper level westerly winds. But in general, look at North America, not as pink. Like, so you see the legend here. The lighter pink is warmer than average, and then the, the next level pink, that the brighter pink, is actually much warmer than average. So a lot of the northern hemisphere, land and water areas, was uh, much warmer than average. But North America, well, not so much. I mean, it was, it was warmer than normal, but not quite as significantly warm. The La Nina was prevalent last winter. We saw cooler than normal water temperatures across the equatorial eastern and the central Pacific Ocean. Um, and you can kind of get a hint at that right here uh, by the air temperatures being cooler than average. So, you know, generally the underlying ocean surface, whatever that temperature is, typically the overlying air will take on that type of similar characteristics. So 
Um, this isn't a sea surface temperature anomaly chart, but I'll get more to that here as we progress into this year's winter outlook. Bringing it now into the United States, we look at these two um, temperature anomaly charts here. Uh, the first one on the left, by the way, the temperature anomalies are in degrees Fahrenheit, courtesy of PRISM, Climate Group, Oregon State University. And by the way, these climatological norms, or what we're comparing the climatological norm, um, that period is from 1991 to 2020, used by PRISM. But in general, we have December on the left, and then we have January of 2022 on the right. So look at what happened here in, in December last year, last winter. This is really impressive. We see much above normal, 10 to 15 degree above normal temperatures, uh, 10 to 15 degree above normal temperatures, stretching from Texas up into Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, Southern Illinois, into Kentucky, and into parts of Missouri. So there's a large chunk uh, here of the Southern US on up into the Tennessee Valley, even sneaking its way, the warmth snuck its way all the way up to around the I-64 corridor, uh, there in around the St. Louis metropolitan area. Uh, the only cooler than normal temperatures for December of 2021 uh, were across northern Montana and parts of the far Pacific Northwest, um, closer to the Seattle area. So it was a very mild December. Uh, and then look at the graphic here on the right. What a change. All that excessively warm, warmer than normal air has now been replaced by slightly cooler than normal air over parts of Texas, Oklahoma, into Missouri, as well as Arkansas and Louisiana and Mississippi. The much colder air, much more below normal, five to 10 degrees Fahrenheit below normal, those temperatures in January of 2022 occurred across uh, parts of Minnesota, uh, Iowa, Wisconsin, Northern Illinois, into lower Michigan, as well as parts of New England up here, um, generally Western New York State. And we had slightly below normal temperatures extending down into the Mid-Atlantic as well, the Ohio River Valley, places like Cincinnati, Columbus, Dayton, Indianapolis, all saw below normal temperatures. Look at the February 2022 temperature anomalies in decreased Fahrenheit now. Um, now we have uh, more significantly cooler than normal across Texas and eastern New Mexico, eastern Colorado, into parts of Oklahoma. Another really um, cooler than normal area was across northern Minnesota where um, those particular locales experienced a 10 degree Fahrenheit below normal temperature departure in February of 2022. You'll notice now the eastern seaboard is slightly warmer than normal, but not very much. Um, not a drastic above normal type situation like we saw back in the winter of 2020 with a very strong polar vortex. Um, we, we do see more of a, on the range of 1 to 3 degree Fahrenheit above normal temperature. So, so not alarmingly above normal up the eastern seaboard, up the Interstate 95 corridor from Florida all the way to Maine. Now, I broke the winter temperature anomalies down for last winter uh, into periods using this particular graphic. Um, and so if we, when we start the period down here in the, the um, earliest part of the time period is here in the lower right, um, this particular graphic, and just generally, um, blue and purples indicate below normal temperatures. And then the orange and the reds, maroons, they indicate above normal temperatures. So you can see what happened here. Um, the end of November, things were below normal across the eastern United States. In fact, going all the way down to Florida. In, in fact, I was down in central Florida at the time around the Orlando area. Um, and it was a chilly time uh, for that part of the U.S. Um, you know, temperatures were a good 5 to 10 degrees below normal in the end of November last year. But then as we progress from right to left, we get more um, recent, the dates get more recent. And uh, you'll notice here now, this is 12-1 to 12-7, in the, bot the very bottom row in the center, uh, we notice a big time warming starting to occur, uh, the even more warming um, from December 8th to December 14th. And then continued very mild temperatures east of the Mississippi River mid-December of 2021. Uh, right on into around the 21st of December last year, right around the um, the winter solstice. And then as we headed towards the holiday season last year, uh, forget the white Christmas concept because it just wasn't happening. We saw well above normal temperatures for parts of Texas, Oklahoma, stretching northeastward towards Kentucky. And of course, some unfortunate tragedy occurred in Kentucky in the city of Mayfield. Um, as you may recall, around the 10th of December, 
uh, this very mild air was streaming south, uh, from southwest to northeast out ahead of a strong cold front and resulted in a very violent EF4 tornado which struck the town of Mayfield and just did uh, some terrible, terrible damage. Um, working our way now, continuing to the left, you notice it stays very warm, even for New Year's. Christmas was very warm in the east last year. New Year's remained warm. We're starting to see some colder air by this magenta and purple shading across western Canada. Starting to work its way southeastward into the Dakotas and Montana by the early parts of January 2022 as we brought in the new year. And then you'll notice now, uh, in especially the, the 12th of January to about the 29th, 31st of January, Look at these blue and purple shadings across the eastern United States. It was below normal temperatures um, in that particular time frame in January. And, and then as we got into February, specifically mid to late February, conditions got milder again in the eastern U.S. But then things got really cold uh, for parts of Texas as we headed into late February, early March uh, of this year, 2022. And then um, March 2nd to March 8th was very much above normal across the mid-Atlantic down in the southeastern U.S. Below normal temperatures were across parts of uh, eastern Montana as well as the Dakotas and Wyoming. So overall, if we break this down into the bullets here I have on the right, the 2021-22 winter temperature anomalies, this was a similar to previous winters in the fact that winter did not arrive until January in the eastern United States, really. I mean, it was a very mild December time. And by the way, research and studies are showing the potential for later arrival times of the winter season as the planet continues to warm. So that's just something that's really interesting. Um, you know, maybe we're going to be looking at a different time period for winter in the future. Maybe it's going to go from, you know, January to March now. It seems like it gets colder later and it remains colder later too, even into the spring months. So the coldest air for last winter was initially concentrated over the Pacific Northwest and Northern Plains. While above normal temperatures occurred from Texas to the East Coast during December, everybody was wondering, geez, is it going to feel like winter anytime soon? All right, so due to the unusual warmth again, unfortunately we had that period of severe thunderstorms that rolled through parts of Kentucky uh, around the 10th of December, highlighted by the EF4 tornado that struck the town of Mayfield. And then after a mild start, we brought in the 2022 New Year in early January. Conditions finally became more winter-like in the east. In fact, there was a couple good snowstorms across the Mid-Atlantic I'm going to get to here in a moment in the month of January. Let's look at the, speaking of snowfall, let's take a look at the overall U.S. picture of snowfall and the percentage of normal. Um, the graphic here on the left is courtesy of Pivotal Weather. Great website, pivotalweather.com. Um, what are we looking at here? So this is seasonal snowfall accumulation um, for generally, this is ending on Tuesday, the March, uh, March 1st, 2022. And it shows generally, it may be hard to read the legend here, but generally, you know, the orange coloring and these darker purples indicate more snowfall. And the uh, blues, especially these grays at the tail end of this coverage, that indicates much less snow, okay? The graphic here on the right really, really tells a story because this shows you um, that from the period 30 September 2021 to 27 February 2022, this shows you departures from normal for snow. And, um, you know, what's real interesting is we had some above normal snowfall across the mid-Atlantic last winter, and it was a La Nina winter. Now, what do La Nina winters do? They usually give milder and drier conditions from the U.S., uh, southeastern U.S. up to the mid-Atlantic. And, uh, you know, we got hit with some uh, pretty good snow, actually, in uh, that colder period in January, as I previously mentioned. So just kind of want to show you how the snowfall panned out across the entire United States for the last winter. Now, this, I'm bringing it in more local to the Virginia Beach area, um, showing you I've got December um, breakdown, daily breakdown, and monthly breakdown on the left. And this is January of 2022 on the right. So we start off in Virginia Beach, Virginia, in the Hampton Road cities. We start out with a monthly temperature departure of 5 degrees Fahrenheit above normal in December of 2021. The monthly precipitation departure, uh, we were drier as well, uh, 1.03 inches below the norm. And by the way, for the Virginia Beach area in the Norfolk area as well, 
This December of 2021 was tied for the sixth warmest December since record keeping began. So it was a very mild December. Um, I don't know if you can really read these temperatures, but generally showing you um, the mean temperature for December was 51.1 degrees Fahrenheit. The highest temperature actually reached 76.8 degrees Fahrenheit on the 11th of December. And then the temperatures dropped down to 27.2 degrees Fahrenheit on the 13th. That's a typical southeastern Virginia winter where you get crazy ranges, you know, out ahead of cold fronts, you get southwesterly winds, unseasonable warmth. And then once the Arctic front blows through a strong cold front, the temperatures drop rather drastically and you get a large spread between your highest and lowest temperatures of the month. Um, let's move over here now to January of 2022. Things changed. Look at your monthly temperature departure now. 3.1 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. So we went from 5 degrees above normal in December of 2021 to 3.1 degrees Fahrenheit below normal in January of 2022. And we were also wetter than normal. Uh, 3.07 inches above normal. And here is the total snowfall that um, we recorded here in Virginia Beach. The January snowfall was 10.2 inches total. And we had two back-to-back -back weekend accumulating snow events. The first one was on, um, the, the measurement I recorded was on 22 January at 6.2 inches of snow on the ground outside Spot on Weather Studios, and then four inches of snow on the ground on 29 January. So just in those two weekend events, we ended up with a total of 10.2 inches of snow, which is definitely above the normal. It's above normal for the entire winter season, and we accomplished that above normal feat in just one month. Um, and you can also notice the drop off here in your mean temperature. You know, it was 51.1 degrees Fahrenheit in December, and then by January of 2022, it was only 39.1 degrees Fahrenheit. And you'll notice also your um, heating degree days uh, really I mean, they almost doubled. Um, that has to do with how much heat everybody and how much energy consumption is being used to heat their homes. Uh, 809.5 heating degree days. Um, so, yeah. So it was wetter and colder than normal with snow in a La Nina winter. Um, the December 2021 numbers actually align more on what you'd expect with a La Nina winter across the Mid-Atlantic, warmer and drier than normal. But look at this. This just goes to show you that even though a La Nina could be forecast, it doesn't mean the entire winter is going to exhibit those La Nina traits or characteristics. So let's take a look at, this is from the National Weather Service Wakefield office. This was the snowfall data for January of 2022. Um, in general, for the Norfolk area, uh, this January 2022 snowfall was 8 inches above average, leading to the 8th snowiest January on record. Um, by the way, for southeastern Virginia, the normal snow window here is between 20 January and 15 February in a typical winter season. Um, so that's usually when you're going to get your best chances to get snowfall, especially accumulating snowfall. Here is some data from the table that was put together by the National Weather Service uh, Wakefield Office um, comparing sites such as Richmond, Norfolk, Salisbury, Wallops Island, Elizabeth City, North Carolina, um, and showing you just, here's the snow column here. I wanted to show you this in particular. Um, there's the eight inch departure uh, above normal for snowfall in Norfolk in January of 2022. We had four snow days in Norfolk, all right? Um, here were the totals at the Norfolk International Airport, 3.5 inches on the 22nd of January and the 6.7 inches. Um, in general, this is, this is pretty good. I mean, 11.2 total inches uh, of snow for the Norfolk International Airport. And then you look at Richmond, Richmond, Virginia, inland, only got 4.3 inches of total snowfall in January. So Norfolk had, um, you know, over seven inches more snowfall than further inland in Richmond. So real interesting. Um, and that, that's what I find most typical about southeastern Virginia winters is usually um, with storm tracks. Um, when Richmond really gets hammered with a lot of snow from a snowstorm from a nor'easter, let's say, going up the coast, uh, Norfolk and Hampton Road cities tend to be rain, a cold rain. Uh, but when you get these dynamic nor'easters, very intense low pressure systems off the coast, um, off Hatteras, for example, and they stay more seaward on their track, you can actually get more snowfall along the coastal areas of Southeast Virginia than you will back in Richmond, let's say, in that area. So, and that's a case where the Hampton Road cities in Virginia get hammered and Richmond gets next to nothing. 
And it really was that storm track last winter uh, that defined what actually happened. Now, let's take a look at the, this is February. I'm moving ahead now to February of 2022 for Virginia Beach. Um, generally, we had a mean temperature of 46 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the maximum temperature reached 75.7 degrees Fahrenheit on the 4th of February. It dropped as low as 20.1 degrees on the 15th of February. And here's your monthly temperature departure. We went up slightly above normal again in the Norfolk area, uh, or Virginia Beach area rather, 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit above normal for the um, February 2022 month. And then monthly precip departures for February was uh, drier than normal again, 0.81 inches. So here's what I'm thinking, right? You look at December, La Nina-like, and you look at February, La Nina-like. Warmer than normal and drier than normal. But then you see this anomaly in the middle with January where it was colder than normal and wetter than normal with above average snowfall. So there you go. All right. These were some of the images um, that were captured from the Southeastern Virginia winter snow events from the winter of 2021-22. Um, this shows you, I believe this is military highway, snow covered um, in late January in one of the events. And you can see how slick these roads are. You can see how much snow has been pushed off to the side of the roads. Um, and then over here on the right, this is a really neat picture here I got. Um, <laughs> this is really cool. Um, in the Hampton Road cities, uh, just showing the snow falling when it was falling. I mean, this looks like a Christmas movie, doesn't it? This almost looks like It's a Wonderful Life when, you know, they're filming the scenes outside on the street. It looks very much like that, doesn't it? All right, so let's review the specific winter storm events for the um, southeastern Virginia area here. 21-22 um, January 2022 was the first storm I'm going to talk about. And these are the snowfall totals from the um, National Weather Service office in Wakefield, Virginia. And the legend is over here on the far left. I know it's hard to see, but the lighter yellows and the darker yellow show the most snow. And the lighter the blue coloring, the less snow there is. So the heaviest snowfall occurred with this particular event, 21 and 22 January 2022, across southeastern Virginia into parts of eastern North Carolina. There were some snowfall reports around 8 inches as well as the south side of Virginia Beach, six inches. Um, and then even down into northeastern, far northeastern North Carolina, Elizabeth City was over seven inches for this event. So it was quite a, quite, it packed quite a punch. Here is the 500 millibar chart showing you what was going on as a setup. Now at the surface, there was an Arctic cold front that had moved through the area on 21 January. Uh, low pressure developed along the stall boundary. As that front moved offshore, it kind of stalled out and an area of low pressure developed at the surface, and it was supported by this positively tilted upper level trough, the shortwave trough. Out ahead of these shortwave trough axes, you typically get rising air motion. And that's exactly what happened. This positively tilted trough pivoted towards the mid-Atlantic. We had an area of surface low pressure develop along the stalled Arctic front offshore, and that moved up just enough parallel to the coast um, along with support from the upper levels here to initiate that snow event. Here are some of the images, actually, from our location. Um, you kind of see the our weather station there, uh, snow covered, as well as the roof beneath the weather station, snow covered as well, on the morning of 22 January. And then here is what it looked like along the fence line in the back. And you can see how high the snow is. Um, one of the other the major themes I forgot to mention for winter snow events in southeastern Virginia all the way to the coast is you need a strong, cold Canadian high pressure system. And that's what we had. We had a 1040 millibar surface high pressure situated over the Midwest, which funneled that cold air in from the north. So the track of the storm was well offshore. We had high pressure back um, to the Midwest or New West, the surface. We had cold funneling coming in at the surface. It did not allow any of the temperatures to warm from the marine influence, and we got hit with some pretty good snow on this event. In fact, I had more snow in this event than I did on this event, which happened on 28.9 January, back-to-back -back weekends uh, where the Hampton Road cities were impacted by accumulating snow. Now, look at the analysis here in the upper left from the National Weather Service Office of Wakefield, Virginia. So now, instead of you know six to seven inches of snow across um, southeastern Virginia, uh, we're seeing now three to five inches of snow. And this, this was a very dynamic system, by the way. 
This one, you now I want you to pay attention to this chart right here in the middle bottom. This is showing a a um, shortwave trough that's starting to take on more of a negative tilt. It was neutrally tilted, then it starts taking on a negative tilt. And uh, this thing really blew up. There was a surface low pressure offshore. And this configuration, once this thing went negative and tilted negative, the shortwave trough, um, that really helped to accelerate the upper level divergence over the surface low. And this thing became a blizzard. If you look at the snowfall amounts here in the upper left again, notice the yellow color in here up on the eastern shore, further up the coast. We're talking 12 inches, up to 8 to 12 inches of snow in this yellow area. So the low pressure was generally off the coast, and then it worked its way a little bit further up the coast northeastward. And when everything came together, all the ingredients came together, the um, negative tilt to the shortwave trough um, and that deepening low, it all came together, the ingredients. Um, generally, that's where we had blizzard warnings for the eastern shore northward. So you live further up the coast, you got more in this case. Um, there is an image outside of the studio here. Um, this is on the 29th of January of 2022. See, I put the date right there in the snow so I could remember it. Something my daughter started, and um, you know, it was a really great idea, by the way. All right. Finally, to wrap up tonight's part one video of the 2022-23 Winter Outlook, as we do the winter season review first. All right. This was my forecast here on the left, these two images here. Um, so I'm showing you the forecast temperature departures from 1 December to 28 February. The top left and the bottom left here, I'm showing you what I was forecasting for precipitation anomalies, whether it was going to be below or above normal. Um, so in general, here is what was observed. These charts are courtesy of the um, NOAA Climate Prediction Center. So overall, uh, not too bad of a forecast last winter, but I'm definitely going to give myself a... Um, a critique, an uh, honest critique. Um, notice I had warmer than warmest temperatures down here along the Gulf Coast, which I kind of went with that La Nina theme over past La Nina winters, and it did live up to that across parts of the Deep South. Uh, a lot of these areas were above normal along Interstate 10 corridor, Interstate 20 corridor, Texas, basically east of the Georgia coast. It was above normal last winter. So I did okay there. Um, I wasn't quite anticipating this warmer than normal air to go all the way up uh, into parts of western PA and um, Ohio and Indiana last winter, I have to be honest. And then I did fine over here um, in northern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan, below normal temperatures. Um, but, you know, there's some below normal temperatures also across parts of the Pacific Northwest. Um, but parts of Montana and North Dakota and South Dakota were just generally normal, near normal for temperatures. Um, so... Yeah, I didn't think it was a bad forecast, but I definitely know uh, there's room for improvement. If you look at the bottom here, um, generally showing you the wetter areas in the green above normal, above the median. Um, generally, we have a, a wetter winter last winter for parts of southern Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee. And I did kind of extend that in my forecast to the east of that area, but there wasn't much... Um, above normal precip, generally west of Missouri. So generally from this point west, um, I overestimated the forecast for precipitation last winter. Um, but I did expect below normal across Southern California. Um, they actually finished just slightly right there in the normal range. And I also expected below normal in keeping with the La Nina winter across parts of the deep south as well, extending upward into the mid-Atlantic. Now New England was also exceptionally dry last winter. One of the main themes I noticed in last winter was the fact that the storm track generally remained further south. We really didn't see a whole lot of nor'easters go all the way up the coast very much. A lot of them would form down along stalled frontal boundaries over the warmer Gulf Stream and then just kind of head out to sea um, and be too far south for New England really to get the larger amounts. Um, so just in general, this is uh, where I'm going to end tonight's video, part one of the 2022-23 winter season or winter forecast. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'll be moving on to part two. And as I mentioned, let me go back to my agenda. My next video, I'm going to delve deeper into, here's a little preview for you. Um, La Nina discussion will be my next video. And it's real intriguing this year, right? Because we're looking at a triple dip La Nina. Um, so that means three consecutive winners with a La Nina. 
Um, so I'll break that down much further, the La Nina circulation patterns, what we typically expect in a La Nina winter in the next video. Um, and then we'll move on to teleconnections and all the other agenda items here, down to part five uh, for the final forecast. But I've certainly um, taken a hard look at these things. Um, seasonal forecasting is never easy. It's really tricky. And uh, we'll see what happens um, as, of course, time reveals everything, right? But I will be back again for La Nina discussion part two of this winter forecast, 2022-23 um, winter forecast. All right, that's all I got for this evening. Of course, there's a lot of things going on in the weather news right now, specifically Hurricane Ian in the Caribbean, which could have large impacts on the Florida Peninsula. Um, but this video tonight, I'm focusing on the upcoming winter forecast. All right, everybody take care. Until next time, God bless everyone.